thoughts, memories, flashbacks, impressions, bad stuff. Just remembering where you've been. Just whispering. Who's ever, who's ever had a sincere heart and you're pursuing to do well and you mean well in your heart? You're trying to read your Bible or you're listening to a worship song or, and that thing from yesterday just shows up or you can't stop thinking about something you did or you keep picturing the thing you knew you'd never do. Who's ever had that stuff happen out of the blue? Who's ever just been living and some thought came out of the blue that was random from yesterday just reminding you of something that you'd rather forget? And it just shows up out of the blue. And then if you're not careful, you tend to wear it. Or you start introspecting and getting analytical and you start assessing your own heart or why am I thinking that or why is that still in me? And all of a sudden we take it somewhere that the strategy of hell's designing it to go instead of taking it in Christ. And all of a sudden you feel a little bad about yourself or a little defiled. You're a young lady, you're driving to work and you remember the situation and the relationship that you're not even in anymore that you were wondering about and cautious but you fell into it and it went where it went and it, you walk through this repentance and these tears and, and you got restored and now you're a year later and you're growing in Christ and you love God and you're going to work and you have the flashback and you see Him and you see that moment and all of a sudden if you're not careful you just feel a little grayed out you feel a little defiled or you have tears in your eyes because you're feeling sorry again. Come on, who knows what I'm talking about happens to people. It's a strategy from hell. And I'm telling you, it's the number one tool that he uses. His thoughts and imaginations that rise above the knowledge of God. You try to counterproductive and counteract your heart. You don't need prayer in those situations. Everybody, I'm not against prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer is powerful. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Prayer is important. But in that situation, you do not need prayer. You, we don't use prayer to feel better. We use truth to believe better. We're always using prayer to feel better. But if you don't believe better, you always need to feel better. Prayer is not some tool to just get some surface sense of comfort. You don't, you don't drive to work and... Let me have that chair. I need this. i got to act this out. I do it all the time. If you've never seen me do it, it'll help you. If you see me do it, just bear with me. Come on, I need you. Come on, right there. Yep, you. Thank you. Just look at everybody and smile. They'll love you. They'll clap for you. They'll just be glad. Yeah. What's your name? Mike. This is Mike. Can you see he's born again? Yeah. Mike sat last night when I was preaching like this. The whole time. <laughs> he was back there. This morning he's here. I said, whoa, moved you to the front row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he came over and said, man, you touched so many things. It was intense last night if you weren't here. It was a lot of conviction. It was a lot of compelling people to live forward and come out of ourselves and truly live Christ. Not just talk a language. Not just speak Christian. But live Christ. Do something about things that don't look like Him and always run things by Him. Like if you can't see it in Him, why is it in us? If we can't comprehend Him thinking what we're thinking, then why is it okay that we're... Come on, let's follow Jesus. It was pretty intense last night. He came over and he said, man, you touched so many things I needed to hear and this is helping me because I'm really... Yeah? So who knows that He's sincere and He's coming out of a life that He wants to just forget and let behind Him. Yeah? And the biggest strategy of hell is... Oh, yeah, Mike, say, woo -hoo. Oh, going to life source now, woo -hoo. The devil's not impressed with us being here this morning. He doesn't even believe we love God. He believes we need God. He's not impressed with the sermon you're hearing. He's impressed when you respond to it and your life starts transforming. You start walking in love. And you don't take things personal. You don't take people personal. You don't let nothing change the life that's in you, the Christ that's in you. That's when you got the devil's attention. He could care less how long we sing, how loud we sing. He cares when you love. He cares when you're betrayed and you don't live one bit betrayed. He cares when your heart has no animosity in it and all you have is love and affection for God and for people. That's when you get his attention. And I'm telling you, he's determined. He's determined to keep Mike in just some limbo place. He doesn't even care if Mike says he's saved. He don't even care if Mike says he's a Christian. He don't even care if Mike believes he's going to heaven. He just wants to make sure Mike never manifests Christ. You know what he does? His number one attack. So Mike's just sitting here. He's reading. You act like you're reading your Bible. You can go ahead. Did you, you ever act in anything? You ever play in a play or... 
Those are your debut. You're going to do good. Cheer him on. He's a good actor here today. So you're reading your Bible. You're just alone. You're in a room. and ain't nobody in the room but you, your convictions, your heart, the Holy Ghost, and that word, right? So there's Mike. Just hang out there and read your Bible, all right? So the devil's over here, and he's watching Mike. I'm telling you, this happens to all of us. This happens to all of us. Who's ever been doing actually really good and off-the-wall crazy stuff starts hitting your mind in your life? Who's ever heard a word and you got so excited and you were like, wow, that was for me. And then all hell starts breaking loose and all of a sudden you don't even remember the word you were excited about. The Bible says the devil comes for the word's sake. He's not coming for Mike's sake. He's coming for the word's sake. He's not threatened by Mike. He's threatened by the kingdom of God that can be built in Mike and the damage that Mike can do through faith. So he wants to keep anything from being built in Mike's life. He don't care that he attends church. He does not want the kingdom of God to get built in his life. Are you with me? And we think we need prayer. We need truth. We cast down every thought and every lie and every imagination that rises above the knowledge of God with truth, bringing it obedient and captive according to Christ. So there's a truth about Mike in Christ Jesus. Who knows that's true? There's a history with Mike. There's a past with Mike. There's things Mike remembers about his life and what he did. There's all that's true. But there's a truth about Mike in Christ. And if old things passed away and all things are new, then we're not going to find the answer through the old things that passed away. We're only going to find it through the new. So here's what happens. Mike's reading his word. Satan's looking at Mike. He's like, man, this guy seems really sincere, but he's probably like all the rest. They get ramped up, mountains, valleys, highs, lows. You know, they come, they go, settle them in. Next thing you know, 30 years, Christianity, no real impact, difference, not loving people, hurt, mad at their boss, same language as 30 years ago, just praise the Lord, know a lot of worship songs. I'll keep them all trapped. This is how brutal it is, guys. The enemy, I promise you, I've known this in my whole Christian life. I've seen this in visions. The devil could care less that we go to church. He is not impressed with our services. He's impressed with how you live by the Spirit. He's impressed with how you walk in love. He's impressed with Christ because he can't do nothing about it. Them devils perceived Christ in Jesus and they perceived that anointing and all of a sudden they're looking at Jesus as a man and they realize they go it's you they're so freaked out by him they're like it's you and they just fell on the ground and said, so what are you here to torment us before our time what's that a confession of they are no match for him they are freaked out by him and they fall on the knee. And we're freaked out by the devil. I prayed for a demon possessed lady one time. She was in a she was a Shiite Muslim. She was in the five percent or radical Muslim family. She was raised in it. This thing had overtook her probably by birth. It's just generational stuff. So the spirit was in her. It's real stuff. She came up front, she heard me preaching, and she came up, and I didn't catch her language. You can just relax, yeah. Thanks for sitting there, though. Just hang out. We just appreciate you, Mike. I'm heading somewhere with you. She came up, and I didn't catch her language. She looked like Pakistani, Afghanistan, something. She just had that Middle East look, dark-complected, sweet little thing, like 20 years old. She said, I didn't catch her language. She said, I want this Jesus, and I want more and more of him. I didn't catch this Jesus. I just caught, I want more and more. I want Jesus, I want more and more of him. That's all I heard. I just didn't catch it. So I'm thinking she's just saying, I love him. I just want more of him. I'm thinking, oh, this girl, she's so hungry. She's just a sitting duck. Holy Spirit, would you come? Father, would you just fill her with more? And before I hardly even to pray, she just kind of like, whoop, boom, and just crashed. Nobody caught us off guard. Nobody. She just slammed to the floor, this little thing. Boom. And I'm like, Oops. I mean, we thought she had a metal plate in her head to weigh it. No. She's, <laughs> she's laying on the floor. And I was like, well, I guess she's getting more of him. So I went to pray for somebody else. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. And I looked. She went in this manifestation, in this fixation. 
Her eyes flew open, her head cocked back, and her hands locked, and she went, and she's staring straight up at the ceiling. She had the most look of terror I've ever seen on a human face. I don't know that an actor could portray what I was looking at. Like, you know how actors are good at putting on expressions and faces and terror and trauma? It was the best expression I've ever seen of total terror. And it was fixed on her like a wax figure. She's motionless. Her eyes aren't twitching. She's just like this. And I said, in my heart, well, this is obviously demonic, Lord. Do you have it? Should I go down the line and keep praying? Do you need me to do anything or do you got it? Because she already came and asked. He already came. She's on the floor. This thing's manifesting. The only reason they manifest because they know they're threatened. They're usually snakes in the grass. They manifest because they're threatened and they try to distract you and get your eyes on them and get you impressed with them. I prayed for a lady once. She came six inches off the ground. All of her body looks like a magic trick. He's trying to get you distracted. It's a silly fallen devil. It's not, well. And he's trying to distract you from the one that's all glory and all power coming and doing what he's doing. And I was in a house one day where the flashlight picks up from the counter to the table and she called me because things are moving and she's all wigged out. I'm not making fun of her. I'm just saying she's all wigged out. It's a stupid magic trick. It's an invisible spirit. So while we're there, the flashlight moves. See? See? I said, honey, let me show you what just happened. There's a spirit you can't see. And you're wigged out. Honey, Christ lives in you. I got her to lift her hands and take authority over her home and fear left her and this courage rose in her and the Holy Ghost and the next thing you know, nothing ever moves again in her house. This lady's fixated and I said, do you need me to do anything? I said, or do you got it? Holy Spirit said, I have a hard time telling this all these years later. I couldn't talk for three days after this happened. Three days I couldn't even tell the story. I just cried for three days. It was so overwhelming. And we buy into so many lies. He said, the spirit that has bound this girl her whole life is beholding the face of the Son of God. Woo! And it was sheer terror on her face. I got this quick image of Jesus standing over her like this, straddling her. He was as tall as a church. Who knows he's way bigger? It was just a simple vision. It was just instant. And boom, it went away. And I'm like, all of a sudden I realize I want this Jesus and I want more of him. She's crying out, but she's bound by a spirit from birth. She don't even have a chance from birth. It just comes on her generationally. But now her heart's moved by the Holy Ghost. And she says, I want this Jesus. And Jesus said, oh, she wants me. You boom. And the spirit goes, ah. And I said, I said, I said, oh, my goodness. It wasn't arrogant. I mean, I felt like rooster crowing. I really did. Like when you're, when you know he's on your side and you're, you're in him. And he has that kind of authority and he's standing there and that spirit is like, so I was like, ah, 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 ah. not in an arrogant way. Confident, barnyard banny, you can beat up anything. The banny's this big, he's taking on the wild turkeys. He'll fight the peacock. He's a banny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody know what I'm talking about with a banny rooster? Well, I kind of felt a little banny. And I said, now you see. Literally, now you see. And now you understand. Why you have to let her go? Because Jesus is Lord. And that girl, in an ear piercing tone, screamed. It was so high pitched and it was like a movie. And she just went limp. Never born again, didn't know Jesus, just heard of Jesus, bound by spirit since birth, generational. Guess what she's doing? Laying there with her eyes closed. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. It's just in our DNA. It's just buried down in there. Just spirits waiting to come alive. We stood her up and the Lord said, fill her 
with the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, come, be baptized. She went, shut up, 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 poof, fell back down. We let her there that time. She said, oh. I'm over praying for everybody else. I'm so ramped up. I get home. I cry and I cry and I cry because of what just happens. A man came over and he said, I couldn't, I, started, I couldn't stop crying for three days. He came up and he said, we were so hoping you'd get to pray for her and that she'd come up front somehow. We were thinking, how do we get, get her prayer? And she just came up. I said, oh, it was amazing. He said, did she tell you she was Shiite Muslim or did God reveal it? I went, huh? I started to cry so hard. You know why? Because if I'd have had that knowledge, I'd have came at it a certain way. And I'd have empowered it. I'd have showed it intimidation. I'd have honored it. Just through sheer knowledge. Oh, Shiite Muslim, 5%er. Oh, this is a big one. And I'm standing there in total conviction, knowing, knowing I'd have somehow empowered it and came at it. And I'm crying, going, you're so amazing. And Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, see, Dan, all I need you to ever know is Jesus is Lord. That works for me. So back to Michael. <laughs> Read your Bible, man. Come on, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word, buddy. <laughs> Study. Show yourself approved. Atta boy, fill your heart with that gospel. <laughs> You're, you're doing great, Michael. <laughs> Not to mention, I kept him up here for how long just sitting, right? So the devil's looking at Michael, and he's like, hmm. So he says, you know what? I'm not taking any chances with this guy. I'm going to, yeah. Come here. Yeah, boss. I need you to go over. See, Michael? He's just going, listen. Oh, boss. Yeah, boss. Oh, you're so smart, boss. <laughs> and he comes to Michael. This is just a little assignment. He's a little limp. He's a little cut off withering branch that's coming to nothing. He's a little imp. An angel that rebelled. That's cursed forever and would love you to be the same. Trying to make you like it. Because you're made for the image of God. Hello? The Lord said, Dan, every time you act in anger, it's a charismatic worship service of the wrong God. Every time you flail and manifest, it's a wrong expression of what you're here for. Don't ever feed the lie live sanctified. I heard that in my heart before I was even a year old in the Lord. So this thing, this little assignment comes. Guess what he's doing? He's pure, sincere. He's growing. He's humble. He knows he's got a ways to go. He just don't want to look back. He don't ever want to go back to what he came from. He just wants change. He's reading his Bible. He's doing his part. And in the middle of all that sincerity, here comes this wicked, merciless thing and starts whispering into his soul trying to bring him back to six months ago, to a year ago, to three things that seemed like the worst of the worst that he ever gave himself to. And all of a sudden, he's sitting there getting pictures, and all of a sudden, he's hearing sentences, and his mind feels like it's just him reminiscing. And all of a sudden, if he's not careful, he's grayed out and he feels dirty. And all of a sudden, he's right back where he was in identity. Are you following me? So I guess that would be his option. To start listening and graying out and slumping over and crying and asking God for forgiveness when he's already forgiven. For actually repenting as if he's still that man when he's not that man. Come on, this is the wiles and the tricks of the devil. But let me show you the option that Mike has. When Mike hears this, oh, say, really? I mean, how can you live the way you lived and all of a sudden you just think everything can be okay? I mean, what about, um, and what about, um, and all these flashbacks. And all of a sudden, Mike just looks up and he smiles in his heart and totally ignores the devil, totally ignores what he heard, totally ignores. Were you ever ignored growing up? Did you kids, when you were kids, ever play the ignore thing? And you're like, did somebody hear something? Hey, it makes you so mad when you know they're hearing you. And they're like, did you hear anything? I didn't hear anything. You're like, come on, man, you guys. And they play it too long and now you're ready to punch somebody because they're ignoring you. The weapon of our warfare is mighty in the breaking down of strongholds. The Bible never said resist the devil. It said submit to God and resist the devil. Submitting is you resisting. It's a one-step program. And he'll flee. So guess what option, other option Mike has other than getting grayed out? Watch. He looks up. Go ahead. You look up from whence comes your help. He looks up 
And he says, Father, I thank you that you love me. God, I thank you. You've forgiven me of everything I've done. You've put a new heart in me. You've put your life in me. You've robed me in righteousness, and I am honored to be your son. God, I thank you that you put your eyes in me, and I'm seeing what you behold. You have made me one with you. You're building me up, Holy Spirit. You're helping me learn. God, I thank you that I have a present, and I have things to come. God, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for doing And all of a sudden, Mike is just, ah. Why? Because the devil suggested something else. And the devil tried to take him back to where he came from. And Mike said, I ain't having it because I'm a man of faith and I believe the gospel. And if I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. And if I'm clean, I'm clean. And if I want change, then I am changing. And all of a sudden, the devil's standing there and he's like, whoa. And he runs back to the boss. Boss, boss. Yeah, did you tell him what I said? Boss, you ain't going to believe it, boss. I told him exactly what you said. Yeah, boss. You ain't going to believe it. He, this guy, he, he lifted his voice and he began to worship God. And God came in the room and I had to get out of there. But you fool, you couldn't have told him what I said. When you talk to Christians that way, they get grayed out, depressed, discouraged, and call for prayer. Not this one, boss. Boss. I think this one is a believer. Thank you. You can go back to your chair. This thing happens to every Christian, what we just acted out. Who relates to what we just acted out? Who can say they relate to that? Listen, it's never a prayer issue. It's a truth issue. Every time Satan touches you, he believes he can break you. And his goal is to break you. But every time he touches you, he runs the risk of making you. So play into the wisdom of God because it's unstoppable. Every time he pokes you, let it be a poking point to stir you in truth, relationship, communion, fellowship with Holy Spirit, decreeing the things you believe, decreeing the things the Word says. Are you hearing me? Watch this. We are never people with a problem when we're living by faith. We're always people with an amazing answer. And it's life in Christ. And it's the truth through Him. I got to do this real quick.